The following is a demonstration of Reed's PVC, CPVC, and 636 Solutions Kit. So this is the new Reed uh, PVC, CPVC, and 636 Solutions Kit. This particular one is the three inch kit, and we also have make a four inch kit. It's designed specifically to help the contractor at a relatively low cost uh, install plastic piping, whether it's ABS, PVC, CPVC, and or on the ventilation side, 636 pipe, right and quickly every time. Comes with three pieces in it. It's got the uh, um, quick release cutter with a special plastic wheel in it. This wheel is a very thin profile and uh, will allow you to cut through the pipe very quickly. It doesn't get fatter as you go in towards the hub, so it'll allow you to cut through the pipe without raising too much of a lip on it and do it very quickly. It's a, it's a, a tool steel, so a, a better quality steel than you would find in, in uh, the vast majority of cutters on the market. We've got multiple rollers up here so you're not oblonging the pipe when you're aggressively cutting through it, and it's quick release so you get it on and off very quickly. The next uh, important part is the DEB4. Stands for deburring up to four inch. It's, uh, it'll do from inch and a quarter all the way up to four inch. It's actually sprung so it'll snap on the end of the pipe and stay there for you. It's got a sharpened blade on both sides so that if it begun, you know, begins to get dull, you can flip it over and sh uh, use the other side. You can sharpen the blade and or it's a replaceable blade so you basically got a, a lifetime tool to do anywhere between uh, inch and a quarter and four inch plastic pipe of, of any kind. And then the third part for the kit is what's called an internal cutter. This is a slide plate that will allow you to, to adjust for depth and lock it down so that you know where you're going to cut from the inside out. Great for floor flanges, great for uh, stub outs, for snorkels, for venting. Anytime that you need to cut from the inside of the pipe because you're too close to wiring, etc., this will allow you to make a very accurate cut from inside the pipe. Well, those are the three pieces to the 636 kit. So when you're doing any kind of plastics fitting, whether it's PVC, ABS, uh, CPVC, uh, the two things that matter uh, when you're putting pipe together is that you have a square cut so that you can get full stab depth into the fitting properly uh, and also that you put uh, an appropriate chamfer or angle on the outside edge of the pipe so that as you stab it in you're not squeegeeing or plowing the, the uh, solvent cement off. So these plastic fittings um, are relatively shallow collar, they're not a very deep stab depth, in this case not even a full inch on this uh, two inch uh, 45. Uh, but not only are they shallow, they are also tapered. They get tighter and tighter as you go inside that, that fitting. So what happens is if you're making, what guys are using right now is they're using often sawzalls and hack saws or chop saws. There's a couple issues with using any kind of saw to cut plastic pipe. Number one is you've got kerf waste or statically charged kerf waste, the little chips of plastic that go up inside the pipe and stick in there. If you're using the pipe for ventilation or pressure, you don't want any uh, chips of, of plastic inside your pipe if you're using it for a pressure system. If you're using the, the uh, uh, system for, um, or the, the, the pipe, plastic piping system for ventilation, you don't want uh, condensate carrying plastic chips back down into the appliance and, and jamming up the trap or on the supply side, uh, the in air intake side, dropping it into your appliance. So you don't want to have statically charged curve waste inside the, the uh, pipe. And also, uh, more importantly, with sawzalls and hacksaws, you can't get a square cut. And if you're out of square, then you have issues with regard to how deep you can get into this fitting. When you put plastic pipe into that fitting, you can actually feel that you're almost a third, sometimes a halfway in. So if you look at that dirt mark right there and there, it'll show you that those are, you're a third of the way into that fitting before you begin to actually make contact with pipe to pipe. Because this is getting tighter and tighter as you go inside that fitting, you need to make sure that you've got an appropriate bevel on the end of the pipe because what you're doing is a chemical weld. You, you've got solvent cement, which is impregnated obviously with solvent, and in this case PVC, and uh, some pigment, some coloring, so that you know that it's there. You need to make sure that you have proper distribution of that solvent on the end of your pipe. A, a cut made with a, a, a tubing cutter or a saw or of any kind You've got a square raw edge that as you stab that pipe into the fitting, you're scraping the solvent off. They call it plowing or squeegeeing it. You're taking all that solvent and you're doing a chemical weld, you're removing it and ramming it inside the fitting. What happens, guys will feel it all the time, you'll solve on both sides, you stick your pipe in, you give it your quarter turn to get the distribution. If you don't hold it long enough, then it wants to spit back out on you. That will tell you immediately that you've just scraped all the solvent off and the fitting is not going to be done properly. 
So the two key things for any guy who's putting plastic pipe together is that you can do a square cut and a clean cut and that you get the appropriate bevel on the end of the pipe. The reason guys are using sawzalls, hacksaws, uh, um, um, chop saws, um, ratcheting shears is because they think that they're quick. And one of the most important things to any contractor is that you're able to do the job not only quickly but also do it right. So a square cut is key. One of the things about uh, uh, sawzalls in particular is that um, it's not about the cost of the sawzall, it's about the cost of what they call consumables, which is in the life of the, the span of your battery and your sawzall, you're going to spend somewhere in the neighborhood of $4,000 on blades. So you can go into a job site with this case and your three tools in it, you don't require any power. Uh, if you're using a ratcheting shear to cut through the pipe, uh, if it's cold weather, you're going to split the pipe longitudinally and that's also an issue. So with this proper plastics tubing cutter and that plastic tubing wheel, you can make exactly the right cut very quickly. That's quicker than a sawzall. Much more importantly, you've got a square, proper, clean cut. But because you're using a tubing cutter, you're actually pushing plastic out of the way and you raise a lip on the end of the plastic. That will scrape or plow your solvent cement off. So you need to put an appropriate bevel on the end of that pipe so you get proper solvent distribution as you enter the fitting. Your DEB4 just snaps on the end of the pipe. The blade rubs up against the side, it's set on a 15 degree F bevel. As you turn it, it shaves beautifully off in one revolution, exactly what you need on a uniform bevel without any burrs in it. That will allow you to have a very nice insertion into the fitting without scraping off the solvent. So I'm going to show you, here's a square raw cut. When we stuff this into the fitting, I'm just going to push it in tight enough till it actually makes contact, so I know I'm now scraping the, the uh, solvent off. If you look inside that fitting and see where that landed in the fitting, you know that you're going to scrape the vast majority of the solvent off of there. If you pull that out and take the beveled end that I just did and insert it into the pipe without any greater pressure, you've now almost hit the bottom of the fitting without even pushing on it. So now, not only have you got to where you need to be in the fitting to make the fitting work properly, you also have proper solvent distribution so that you're going to get the proper weld. This is a chemical weld you're making. So the third tool that the 636 kit comes with is the internal cutter. Um, Reed's internal cutter also has a sliding plate so you can actually set a depth that you want to make your cut at and allows you to give a, a, a 90 degree cut on the end of the pipe. There's an adjustable Allen key so you can slide the plate to the depth that you want. So in this case, if we wanted to actually uh, make our cut uh, in between the S and the I on the pipe here, we'd adjust this, take our Allen key, lock down the plate so we know exactly where we're going to make that cut and we're going to make our cut from uh, the in inside of the pipe outward and end up with a nice 90 degree cut. These tools are perfect for, plumbers love them for uh, floor flanges, um, uh, shower drains, uh, uh, pool guys, you can also get this with an abrasive blade on the end of it as opposed to the saw blade. Uh, so if you're up against masonry or in-floor heat, those kinds of things, you can make those cuts from inside out without destroying your blade every time. Now I have a nice square clean in cut from internally so that if I was up tight against any kind of electrical or anything that I couldn't cut from the outside, I can make a nice clean interior cut. And obviously just throw your DEB4 on the end of that. Clean that burr off, clean out your kerf waste, get a nice clean cut if you're proper. This concludes the demonstration of Reed's PVC, CPVC, and 636 Solutions Kit. For more information on this product or any of Reed's high quality pipe tools and vices, visit www.reedmfgco.com.